Hey everyone, welcome. My name is Robin Cavallaro. I'm a realtor here in Florida. Primarily, I sell in the villages. And in this episode today, I'm going to go over a couple of things that uh, I've talked about in other videos, but it constantly comes up and I feel like I need to address them. Again, we're going to talk about golf carts. And do you really need one? Taxes. I'm going to show you uh, a revisit of a video that I did um, probably a couple months ago, um, all about the different tax areas and where to find the tax bills. Uh, we're going to talk about renovations and what you can expect uh, for regarding prices. I've had several clients and friends go through the renovation process, and I want to pass that information along so you know what to expect if you're going to buy a fixer-upper home, buy a home that needs additional um, updates, and... Also expenses, what the monthly expenses are to live here. And I'm going to show you where you can find that bill. Districtgov.org, you can find everybody's utility bill. I know, it's public record, so I can tell you about it. And my camera, it, so I, I did like this whole video and my microphone, let's make sure this is on. Yeah, the receiver was on, but the mic is dead. So now I have it plugged into the wall. You can't see it. So it's annoying when you go through the whole thing and have to do it over again. But before we get started, this episode is brought to you by, sponsored by, Sterner Home Inspections. I ha Sean Sterner has pretty much done almost all of the inspections on homes for my buyers. He is on my vendor list. Now, first off, I will tell you, I do not receive any money, referrals, gift cards, or anything from Sean. And you need to know that because I have him on the list and anyone is always available to choose whomever you wish to inspect your home. I'm just comfortable with Sean and I know how he operates. Um, I know what his reports look like, how to decipher them. And it just works for me. I like working with him. He's very responsive and he's definitely a go-getter. Um, but right now he's offering... Um, I kind of want to say it's a special for the one year punch list inspection. Now this is going to pertain to if you purchase a new home from the villages, there are inspectors that will go in at the one year mark and make sure everything is still in working order under warranty that the warranty department will come in and fix it. So I believe he said it was about $400 and his contact information is below and he will do that inspection for you and contact him directly. You don't call me, you call Sean. So I want to thank him for all his hard work. Sean Sterner of Sterner Home Inspections. All right, I'm back. You know, being a YouTuber is not all hair and makeup and signing autographs. Just kidding. I do my own hair. And uh, I did get a one autograph request since I've done this, which is very exciting. And I was recognized, well, I get recognized at Publix a lot and, and around the villages, but a couple recognized me. I was with my granddaughter, we were in Publix, and they're like, we thought that was you, but we recognized her. So Clara Ray Daigle, you are a star. All right, so anyway, um, yeah, so it, it wasn't just the battery that's going dead. Now this camera is moving, driving me insane. And I had to change the battery twice. Okay, I'm going to get through this because I have a phone call I have to take at 2 o'clock. All right, here we go. And then make sure that receiver's on because it's really going to fire me <laughs> up if that doesn't work. All right, so we're going to talk about golf carts. And do you really need one? First off, a full disclosure, I don't have a golf cart. And I haven't owned a golf cart. I think I've been on a golf cart about five times since I've been here. Um, I don't have a golf cart lifestyle. So I'm not retired, so I don't have extra time to get around. And also, I am out on the road all the time. So if I'm going to stop, I'm going to stop while I'm out. If I were to come home and get in a golf cart to go over to Publix, I'm telling you I have a stroke by the time I got there. But um, So I just do everything while I'm out. If you golf, obviously you're going to want to have a golf cart. Um, you can golf without a cart, but what will happen is you have to go to a championship golf course, rent the cart, and then go back to the executive course where you're going to play if you're playing on the execs. 
um, with the cart. That's the only way to get a cart over there if you don't own it. You always can walk the course. The golf cart paths are the hardest thing to navigate. And people come here and they're like, oh, we want to explore in a golf cart. It's like, seriously, if you want to explore the villages because you're thinking about moving here, get on a cart, but seriously, you need to get in the car because it is so big here. You know, 18, 20 miles from one end to the other, you're not going to see much on a cart unless you're a month. Um, there's no direct path. So, you know, it can be problematic getting around. You just have to think about that. And I talk about that a lot because I hear all the time, you know, it makes me nuts where they tell me, oh, I bought a house in Dabney. It's close to Eastport. <laughs> you obviously haven't been out there because Dabney is not close to Eastport. You are not getting out on a golf cart. I say Lake Denham and Dabney are not golf cart accessible. My opinion I've been out there by car. It's very far from what will be Eastport. There's no direct route. You'd have to go up to Sawgrass and back down Bexley Trail, or it's about a four mile ride in the car from Dabney to Eastport. Um, so you always can expect to add 20, 30 minutes onto your trip if you're in a golf cart. Certain areas, like if you're an avid golfer, Living south of 44 could be problematic if you're in a cart. It's just gonna, you're gonna take you a lot longer to get around. Um, you know, you can go to the squares in the cart and it's fun. You know, I'm gonna rent one when my granddaughter comes up one day and, and take her out on the cart. It'll be fun. Uh, but if you have a lot of time and you're retired though, so it may, you don't care if you have to take an extra half an hour to get somewhere. But the cart paths are not easy to navigate. You need to know where you're going. Uh, you should get the Villages app so it tells you, because, you know, there's no direct route. You might have to go on a path, through a tunnel, over a bridge, you know, and they curve and people are flipping these things because they're a little hammered while they're driving. And um, it can become a little unsafe. So you, just like a car and just like a motorcycle, you have to be cognizant of what's going around. Um, I was coming up Marsh Bend Trail. I was coming from my daughter's house and I could see two people miss the turn coming out of McClure Gate and they ended up on Marsh Bend Trail. They didn't know where they were going. They missed because you have to turn before you go through the gate and then you go up the multimodal path up to Everglades and down and then, you know, whatever, go over to Water Lily Bridge to get up to um, Brownwood. So getting around on a golf cart is fun. But you have to be careful. People, let me tell you something. You don't realize this, and you probably do. You still can get a DUI on a cart. So you have to be careful. You can get DUI, DUI if you're walking. But um, it's, it's, like, it's fun. If you have time, it's a great method of transportation. But if you think you're going to get around places quickly, mm, might not be the right thing for you. It's not right for me. Plus, I have a one-and-a-half car garage with a motorcycle in it, so I do not have room for the golf cart. But just think about that when you're, when you're moving here and there are tons of places to buy carts. You can buy them brand new. You can buy them pre-owned. I've sold a couple of golf carts for my sellers when they were looking to move um, and found them for my buyers because I knew there were homes on the market that were selling the cart. So if you want a cart, you might want to ask a realtor. They might know where to find one. So that's my spiel about carts. Um, they're all, well, here, they're all different prices and sizes. There's a gentleman that uh, Band of Brothers meets at City Fire on Tuesdays, and there's a guy that shows up. His cart looks like a tank. <laughs> it's pretty funny. But you see some really cool, and people spend a lot of money on these carts. You know, they get them all souped up. They look like a Harley or a fire engine or whatever. So it's fun to watch. Um... But it's not necessarily necessary to live here and, and have to have a golf cart because you can still get around on a car. So that's my opinion. Obviously, all these videos are my opinion. All right, let's talk about taxes. I know it's crazy. Um, we have, what did I say? We have one, two, three, four, five, six different tax rates here in the villages. And again, this video, where the cheapest place to live in the villages lays out all of that. I show you tax bills, 
Um, I show you where the least expensive area to live in is, or to, you know, to buy a house, um, based on the taxes. And you must know each county has a tax estimator. So you can go into the county's website and find the tax estimator. Now I am going to tell you Sumter County is the easiest one to find. I still have a bear trying to find the one in Marion County. Um, you need to know if where the area is. So for example, in Sumter County, there's Sumter County and then there's Sumter Wildwood. You need to know that where you are to find out what the taxes are. And I always figure out the taxes for my buyers. I'll go through and say, okay, your new taxes based on selling price are going to be X amount of dollars uh, based on that tax estimator. And you can enter if you have a homestead exemption or you're a widow, widower, if there's, you know, obviously if you are 100% disabled veteran, you pay $0 in property taxes in Florida. Thank you very much for your service. We appreciate you. So you don't have to pay property taxes. That said, you still must pay the bond and the CDD that you can't get out of. It's like IRS can't get away from it unless the bond's paid. Then you have to pay for it. Uh, yeah, I apologize. I think this camera's kind of jumping around a little bit. What I did is I have, I had it on a shelf, then I have it a little riser. So it, it's up higher. And when I move it, it moves and my feet are starting to hurt here. So I got to move them out. Uh, and no, I'm not getting a chair. I'm sitting here. Somebody mentioned I should get a chair and stop jumping around. Sorry, can't do that. Um, I like how this wall hits in the back and I get the sun from the front. So this is how it stays. Um, so Sumter County is the least expensive tax rate. Then we have Sumter Wildwood. Then there's Marion County. And then Lake County has three tax rates. There's the historic district, which is Lady Lake. Then there's Pine Ridge, and that's east of Morse. That's the newer section over uh, Pine Ridge, that area. Um, that's Fruitland Park. So they have Fruitland Park tax on top of the county taxes. And then the new section, Newell, Dabney, Lake Denham, um, they're Lake County, Leesburg, and they are the most expensive tax rate. Always ask your realtor or sales associate if you're dealing with the villages, what the taxes are, what the taxes will be, what the bond is, and the CDD. All important things you need to know. Also, when you're looking at a listing and you see the taxes, just use that as a baseline indicator because you have no idea how long the buyers or the sellers, excuse me, have been in the home. If they've been in the home in a long, for a long time, the taxes could significantly increase as opposed to someone maybe bought the house two, three years ago because the taxes can only go up 3% if you're a Florida resident. Um, so you have to uh, be cognizant of that and don't always rely on what's you can rely on what's in public record because that's what they're currently paying, but that might not be what you will pay. So please understand that and watch that video. That'll clear everything up, should clear everything up for you. Always, if you have any questions, please call me, text me, email me. Um, let's talk about monthly expenses. So the uh, utility bills can be found on districtgov.org and you can search anyone's address and find out about what the water usage is, uh, what the sewer is, what the amenity fee is, because the amenity fee changes. So right now we're at $195 a month, but I was told that the amenity fee will increase yearly, can increase yearly based on the date the home originally transferred from the villages to the first homeowner. So just because you maybe purchased the home in March, if that home originally transferred from the villages in July, in July your amenity fee can go up. So yeah, that's what I was told because a friend of mine, his amenity fee is more than mine and it shouldn't have been. So anyway, definitely wanna know that. Um, I'm gonna move again. <gasps> All right, that was fun. <laughs> you took a tumble with me. Um, 
Water, sewer, trash amenity fee. Now I have a patio villa, it's 1,152 square feet. My water, sewer, trash, and amenity fee are about or $250 a month. And the trash is like 20. Water and sewer are, this, are one rate. Your irrigation water is a separate rate. And you can control that. You can control your irrigation how many times a week? It is only supposed to go on twice a week. Like mindset, Sunday, Thursday, 3 a.m. But when it gets rainy, I turn it off. There's no need to water the lawn when it's raining. Um, yeah, so just so you know that, you can control that, and it's a different rate. And you definite, you want to keep an eye on your water bill. And I'm going to tell you a little funny story from when I lived in Pennsylvania. Um, my water bill, every quarter, water and sewer, well, 50 bucks. And, you know, I have been in that house 25 years, and then I get a bill for $250 for water and sewer. I almost had a heart attack. So I called the water company and I said, that's not right. And they told me, you must have a leak. <laughs> I'm like, all right, so that's like five times the water Noah would be here if I was spewing that much water out of my toilet. So I decided I wasn't going to pay them. I'm going to show them, you know, I'm going to research this, blah, blah, blah. Well, come to tell you three weeks later, they showed me and they turned my water off. <laughs> my son came home. There was a note in the door. They turned the water off. So I had to go down to the water authority and pay the bill. Just keep track of your water bill. Watch the usage every month to make sure there aren't any big spikes. Because if there are big spikes, they're going to tell you it's a leak and you're going to need to find it. They're not going to do anything about it. And it's not just the villages. That's just a water department thing. Um, my electric... My electric bill just came yesterday, at seventy-nine dollars, and it'll it ranges from seventy-nine. This past summer was expensive; it was about one hundred sixty bucks a month, and it hadn't been that much. The most it was was like one hundred forty since I moved here, but it was one sixty. My gas bill is anywhere from twenty-four to thirty dollars. That's probably about the basic. And I have a gas dryer, I have tankless gas, hot water, and I have cooking gas. And my cooktop is gas, and my oven is gas. And I say that because not many people probably have this, but you can get dual fuel ranges where the gas you cook with, the oven is electric. Just a little tidbit there. Um, my cable and internet, I think I pay about 125. Now I opted to stream regular television from the cable company. It wasn't that expensive and I do like to watch the news. And there are a couple shows that I'll watch on TV, so I want to make sure that um, that I uh, I'm able to do that. So I do get cable. I have high speed internet. I I have a pretty fast package because I need high upload speed uh, for uploading videos. It's a little rough. Um, I had Xfinity when I first moved here and the upload was terrible. It's taking me hours to upload videos and now I have Spectrum. But you can't get Spectrum everywhere in the villages. I think 32162 zip code, I heard the guy at the Spectrum store say that they can't sell in that zip code, but you want to double check for yourself. Um, when it comes to, you know, entertainment, I don't eat out a lot. And obviously your tastes are going to be different than mine, so to speak, when it comes to spending money entertainment. I cook. Um, I do go out to eat once in a while. But um, so your entertainment budget, you know, it's funny. Um, I'm not going to mention the gentleman's name. He's probably watching. He called me the other day and he said he wanted to spend some money on a house, but he wanted to make sure he kept it at a certain level because he wanted to be able to participate and give back to the community. By that, he meant going out to the bars and drinking. Make sure my receiver yeah, is still working. Uh, <laughs> That was pretty funny. I'm like, thank you very much for contributing to the village's economy. Uh, gasoline, you know, my gas is probably higher than everyone else's because I do laps around the villages every day. Um, my insurance for this home is $1,200 a year. Uh, it's with State Farm. And uh, this is 1,152 square foot home, but it was built in 2018. So it's a new home. There's no question about the roof, the HVAC, or, and we have tankless hot water. Um, I tell everyone, use 
$1.25 to $1.50 a square foot as a good uh, estimate. I'm sorry, my phone is buzzing. I apologize for looking at it. Um, I'm constantly multitasking. What else? Groceries, again, that all depends how much you go out to eat, how much you cook, what you like to cook. I did just sign up for Butcher Box. And um, I am going to mention them. I'm going to show you here because I do, this is one of the things where I do get a commission if you were to make a purchase. So the first box I got had, uh, so you buy meat and you can buy as much as you want. I think you can, uh, there was, I don't know, I can get it every three weeks, four weeks, whatever. Eight, I get it every eight weeks. And in my first box, I got ribs, a rack of ribs. I chose the free ground beef. So I had four pounds of ground beef because two I paid for, two I got free, uh, a pork roast, like a pork butt to make pork, pulled pork, a two steaks, a brisket, and a chuck roast. And it's all been very good. I'm very happy. The burgers were amazing that I made with the uh, ground beef because it's all organic, uh, farm raised, farm raised, salt raised on farm. Um, grass fed, but butcher box, check it out. Um, and one last thing I will tell you also, but I don't know, I was on a, on a kick, uh, wild grains, it's bread and pastry. And, uh, I got some bread, I got some pastries and cookies and I'll, I'll, you know, show you here. It was very easy. It goes frozen to oven in 20 minutes. You have fresh baked cookies, beautiful. Oh my God, the croissants were amazing. They had this buttery, you know, flaky, but crisp crust on the outside. Ah, oh, they were outstanding. Tasted like you were at a French bakery getting a croissant, but you want to check those out. Now I do have, um, associate links. If you want to check that out, I do make a little bit of a commission, uh, if you were to purchase that, but so that's what I do for food. Sometimes I don't even go to the supermarket. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I think I got uh, cable. Yeah, pretty much everything there. So for your expenses. Now, of course, oh, lawn. Um, Dean's does my yard. It's $70 a month. They come every week. And then it's $83 every other month for the pest control. And they um, fertilize the yard. You definitely need fertilization because mine, uh, the one company that was here wasn't really taking care of it. And uh, I had cinch bugs and part of the lawn was messed up. So you definitely want to make sure you have some type of fertilization when um, with your home. And also if you're a snowbird, think about there are a lot of companies out there that do uh, home watch. Well, they'll come in and, and check out your home once a week for you while you're not here. So that's something that you should consider would be an additional expense. All right. Uh, so last, we're going to talk about renovations. Um, obviously, it runs a gamut because it depends how big your house is, what products you're choosing, where you're getting them from. But uh, I'm just going to go over a quick couple things for you. Um, <clears throat> a Ruby model. Is, um, so a Ruby model, granite countertops, with bathrooms, you're probably going to look about $7,500 to $8,500, depending on what you're picking. Um, the Ruby model, and I use that as an example, has a pretty large kitchen. So you can expect if you have a really large kitchen, um, that you're going to, you're going to spend about eight, nine thousand dollars Obviously, if you have one of those little pantries or, um, you know, like they have a little coffee bar in a separate room. Um, if you have big, huge island, you're going to pay more, but that's a good estimation. Flooring, uh, LVP in a patio villa with new baseboards, about $8,500 to $10,000, depending on what you're picking. Uh, I did have a client that had a 2,000 square foot home. It had tile and carpet. The company pulled the tile up and replaced all, and the carpet, and put all LVP down, and they paid $16,000. So um, you want to, you figure, you know, would it probably 16 and up. So there you have it, 2,000 square foot, 1,000 square foot, everything in the middle. 
when it comes to bathroom, if you want to have your bathrooms remodeled and tile, make sure you interview a lot of people. Uh, prices are all over the place from 10000 to 18000 for one small bathroom. And so you're just going to, and, and obviously it all depends on what kind of tile you pick. If it's tile, you know, they do have those companies that, hey, this is what your shower look like today. This is what it'll look like tomorrow. But I would say use an estimate between eleven and about 18000 depending on the size of the bathroom. Um, paint, I would say 2,500 and up for paint, including the material depends on the size of the home and what you, what the scope of the job is. You know, I can tell you remodeling is a little bit of a rough business, finding con, not finding contractors, but just going through the whole process is, is, you know, can be a pain in the neck <laughs> to say, and I watch so many people go through it and think, ah, you know, but if you're looking for a home, you can't find exactly what you're looking for, then a renovation is a good idea. People renovate brand new homes. And I hear this all the time. And I talk about this in a couple of videos I did, you know, because the new homes are really cheap, but I had someone tell me, because I talked about how you're going to remodel it. And they emailed me and said, yeah, you know, you're right. I bought a brand new house and I put 30 into it. So, but if it's the right house, it's the right house. But if you want something else in a different area, but you don't want to be down South, but you, you want a newer home because you don't think you're going to spend money on it. You just got to research, 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 make sure you make the right buying decision. Um, I've had people get quotes for epoxy in their garage, two car garage, starting at 1800 and up. Uh, gutters. I had a company cause just wanted to see how much it was. They quoted me like a thousand dollars to put on. And I really only, need, the gutters I only really need in the front of my house cause of the patio villa, the water pours off the roof and drops right down into the stone. And then it bounce, the dirt bounces up into the lanai. Not every home here has gutters. So look at that when you're buying a home, if it has gutters or not, it's probably something you're not thinking about because you're coming from up North and everyone has gutters. Uh, but we don't hear. <laughs> so think about that. Uh, what else? Let's see. Appliances. That's all over the place. Uh, yeah. I think that pretty much, if you have any questions about renovations, again, you can go to my website and get a list of contractors, but uh, call me, email me, text me with any of your questions. I am here as a resource for buyers and for sellers. And remember, if you're looking to sell your home, people, I've got like four calls this week. Is your fee negotiable? Yes, it is. Depends on what you want me to do for you. Depends on what another realtor is doing. No, I don't care what other people do for you. I tell you what I'm going to do and how I would move forward. And I tell you what that would entail uh, and what that would cost as far as commission goes. So everything is negotiable. If you want to talk about negotiating your listing commission, call me. I'm your girl. Um, I think that's it. I'm getting ready. My phone call is going to come through in a minute. Everyone, thank you so much for joining me on this episode. I'm Robin Cavallaro. I'm your licensed realtor here in the state of Florida. If you like this episode, I think you should check this next one out. You may like it too. All right. Until next time. I'll see you.